population and the growth, the IPv4 address space, uh, fast networks, just basically how bandwidth has changed the ability to target that many IPs, uh, the availability of cheap memory, and 32-bit processors and all the fun problems available with those. First off, the human population right now is somewhere around six point million, excuse me, six billion to seven billion people, depending on who you ask. The current estimates are around six point seven billion from the UN, but they kind of go up and down depending on you know what wars are going on at this point in time. Uh, China is currently at one point three billion people for their population. India is at one point one billion, and the US is at three hundred five million. Just to kind of give you a scale of things, uh, the graph on the right hand side, the blue line is actual actual numbers from the UN. When it starts to di di diverge into red, yellow, and orange, those are the, the estimates by the UN about high, medium, and low. So they think by 2020 we could theoretically be at 11 billion people in the best case scenario, or depending on you know famine and shortages, things like that, then it would be much lower. And the slide deck will be available with all the sources for all these graphs too, so if you don't like my numbers, I can blame the source most of the time. So internet usage. Uh, the World Bank has all kinds of great data about who uses the internet, how many people are you know, in certain countries, how many people you know, practice a particular faith, all sorts of great things. Uh, one of the best stats I found was internet usage globally. Um, the current World Bank estimates, which are for 2009, say that 22.48% of China, of all of China's population, uses the internet for something. Um, from the same survey in 2009, the US uses 72.35%. Um, now, 22.48% seems like a small number, and so you look at 1.3 billion people as a population. That means there's actually more internet users in China than there are people in the United States overall. If you look at the growth rates over the last four or five years, you can see that in the US, this is actually a typo, 72% 72, 72 was actually reached 12 years ago in the US for internet uh, use popul by population. It hasn't gone anywhere since. Every person out there that's a holdout that doesn't use the internet is probably going to die without using the internet at this point. We've just gotten to the point where uh, if you're not actively using the internet for anything today, you probably won't, never will or never you know, won't care about it. Uh, so it's kind of surprising to see that internet growth has actually been flat in the U.S. for the last 12 years, considering you know we've been doing lots of fun internet type stuff. You know there should be more. Uh, but China, being at 22.48, they're actually estimating they'll be at 50 percent by 2012. Now, 50 percent of the Chinese population in 2012 is about twice that of the entire United States. So uh, it should be interesting to see how this shakes out. So if you look at the usage patterns of uh, internet users in the U.S. versus China, you see a pretty clear split. This survey, I think, is from 2008. It was sourced from the, the China, Chinese NIC and the Pew Research Center. On the left-hand side, you can see all, mostly business uses for email, things like email, um, excuse me, for the internet, email, uh, internet banking, travel, travel reservations, online payments, uh, you know, some social networking stuff, but it's mostly geared towards the business users. On the right-hand side, you see all the social media, uh, blogs, music, you know, basically entertainment purposes and that's where uh, the Chinese population is using the internet much more than the US population so in this graph the uh, red bars are China the blue graphs are the US you can see that on the right hand side the, the numbers are much higher for China and almost every single entertainment category and much lower for all the financial and technology categories so the use cases are entirely different. We're going to have you know, twice as many people using the internet uh, in China than there are people in the United States by 2012, and all those people care about is online music and blogs. So give me an idea of kind of where things are headed. So if you look at the total population for internet users across, um, I think the last survey is 2009 in this case, there's actually 1.8 billion people using the internet today. Uh, Asia makes up 764 billion, excuse me, 764 million of those. Uh, Europe has 425 million. Uh, North America is actually only 260 million, and 200 million of those are the U.S. So Mexico and Canada just really aren't pulling their share in terms of you know twittering or something. I'm not sure. Uh, but China is 300 million, as we mentioned before, and the U.S. is 200 million. Now, the 1.8 billion number is fun because that's about 42% of the 32-bit max. Um, we're actually getting pretty close to filling in all, you know, you know, at least a quite a number of those bits in terms of being able to track that number of internet users. I'll go to. So if we look at uh, domain name registrations from 2008 to 2009, this also gives you an idea of kind of what the scope of the current internet is. In this case, uh, there are 84 million registered dot coms between 2008, excuse me, in 2009, December 2009. There are about uh, 12 million, excuse me, 12 million dot nets and everything else is way below that. So all those GTLD guys saying they're going to sell you dot Nike, dot Air, dot whatever, um, they're trying to cash in on the fact that no one cares about anything but dot coms even now. Uh, but the number that's important here is the 84 million number. 
Now, if you look at the net craft survey for 2009, basically 96 to 2010, you look at the most recent numbers in 2010, they're saying that there's something like 2.4 billion websites, or sorry, no, sorry uh, 240 million uh, websites out there today. And of those 240 million, only 84 million are what they term active websites. Um, those 84 million are sites that don't have the same landing page. So, for example, if a domain hosting company ha or domain parking company has 100,000 domains, but they only have one page of content, and you have to change things like the titles and the, the footers, uh, Netcraft will only count that as one domain. So there's actually 84 million unique sort of websites and domains out there. And now let's look at the IP space. Uh, for the IPv4 address space, there's only 3.7 billion possible addresses you can use of the 4.3 billion. Uh, the reason for that is class D and E get carved out. That's 536 million. Uh, the zero net, the 127 net for loopback, and all the RFC 1918 networks, um, those get those come out of the total. So it's all said and done. You only have 3.7 billion possible IPs you can even use in IPv4. Um, of those, 3.37 billion have been allocated at the slash eight level. So a pretty big portion of the internet's already been allocated. This is what all the IPv6 Google has been about. Um, of those, there's only 334 million available IPs that haven't been allocated left that you can do anything with. Unless you start carving out, you know, broadcast and unicast, which become, or uh, broadcast and multicast, which become huge problems by themselves if you do that. Um, if you look at one of the most recent internet census data, uh, I think this is from CIADA, or CIDA, or CIDA, or however you pronounce it, uh, they did a mapping where they went through and sent uh, NMAP SIN probes and ICMP probes to all the allocated IP space. And they did this between 2005 to 2007, and they also came up with growth estimates to say how much um, the IP space is, how dense the IP space is becoming over time. So they came up that it's about 17% to 24% of uh, density growth over time in the IPv4 space. So based on those numbers, we're looking right around 1.7 billion of the 3.37 uh, billion are actually being used at any given point in time. Everything else is basically dark net still. It isn't being you know, actively used. And this actually includes a lot of legacy networks as well. So a lot of the DOD, the early technology companies, BBN, they're not really using very much of their space. And that's where a lot of those holes are. Um, if you look at things like uh, a lot of the Chinese IP space or Russian IP space, um, you'll find subnets where every single IP is active all the time. And if you scan it the next day, is completely different IPs the next day. They're actually so short on IPs that they're basically forcing really short DHCP leases for things like DSL customers, cable customers, um, even dial-up customers are getting allocated you know, to multiple slash Bs because they have to keep swapping uh, users around because of the shortage of IP addresses. So the interesting thing here is the 1.7 billion number. So if you start looking at things like population versus domains versus IP addresses, you come up with some really cool ratios you can start looking at. So you say, well, how bad is it if I own five IPs? Um, how bad is it if you know I control this much of the IP space? You can actually start making really good estimates based on these numbers and these ratios. Uh, so for example, for every internet user, there's about 3.72 uh, humans on the planet for every IP, for every internet user. Uh, for every user that's active, there's actually one IP address being used. It's 1.7 billion versus 1.8 billion, so it's a little fuzzy, but it's pretty close to it. If you're just trying to use straight estimates. So you can say that for every IP address you can own or take down or compromise, you're actually taking out one single person. It's a pretty pretty accurate human ratio. It's actually a little bit above that. Uh, for every user on the planet, every internet user on the planet, there's nine registered domain names. For every 17 U.S. residents, so excuse me, out of every 100 internet users, 17 of those are U.S. residents. Everybody else is international. So we're not really that big, that big, of, you know, that big of a chunk of the pie at this point. Um, we're bigger than our size qualifies for, but we're not bigger in terms of population density. Um, for every uh, registered.com out there, there's 21 users. Uh, for every active website, there's only 21 users. So you talk about competing for eyeballs, this is exactly where these numbers come into play, because you only have 21 users that would be allocated if you split it evenly. And of course, these aren't split even evenly. Google owns something like 40 or 50% of all eyeballs. Um, Yahoo probably owns another 30%. Just the numbers aren't really uh, easy in that sense. Uh, so back to the IP address ratios, you've got 86% of the IPv space is even usable. Of those, 91% is actually being allocated, and 50% of that's actually active. So this is all just kind of uh, ratios you can use to kind of put the rest of this presentation into context. So quick dive into uh, packet transmission speeds. If anyone here is well versed on networking, please ignore the fact that I'm not talking about internet, internet, inter, inter packet gaps or Ethernet collisions or things like that. Uh, this is all stuff that does apply, but it's not doesn't make enough of a difference that I'm going to ca calculate it here. Uh, so every thousand byte packet that you send per second comes out to about eight kilobits per second. Um, this because every byte becomes eight bits. Every bit